Well, Sonia Sotomayor, Sotomayor has been appointed by, or nominated, I guess is the appropriate word, for, by President Obama, as the Constitution gives him the, the, not just the right, the obligation to do. And the Republican talking points are, have, been, have been leaked. Most of them are, you know, hey, you know we're going we're gonna to be reasonable about this until uh, we decide not to be uh, reasonable. Uh, it's uh, additional talking points. Uh, Justice Souter's retirement could move the court to the left and provide a critical fifth vote for further eroding the rights of the unborn and property owners, imposing a federal constitutional right to same-sex marriage, stripping under God out of the Pledge of Allegiance, and completely secularizing the public square, abolishing the death penalty, and judicial micromanagement of the government's war powers. Uh, none of these are issues on which uh, Sonia Sotomayor, as, be- as well as I can find, has, has uh, voted. Chris Slattery is with us. Uh, Chris is the founder of Expectant Mother Care. He's an EMC frontline, uh, with EMC Frontline Pregnancy Centers, a pro-life leader for over 25 years, strongly opposed to a woman having a legal right to an abortion in the United States. He's organized a- Operation Rescue in New York City, prayer vigils, protests, and Planned Parenthood conferences. Uh, EMCfrontline.org is his website. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom. Chris, as far as I can tell, in the only case that involves abortion, Judge Sotomayor uh, Mayor has denied a claim brought by an abortion rights group challenging a Bush policy that prohibited foreign organizations that receive foreign funds from performing or supporting abortions. In other words, she's voted on your side. Well, that case was uh, an interesting one, but it really had more to do with policy about funding of uh, whether the government actually had the right to establish a of Mexico City policy. Right, it was more procedural than it was whether or yes. not a woman has a right to an abortion. Uh, and there know. was another case involving Operation Rescue, believe it or not. Going back to a case I was involved in, West Hartford, where we sued the city of West Hartford for brutality against uh, Operation Rescue activists. We eventually lost that case, but she made a procedural vote in our favor at one point in the case. So, uh, why are you, uh, I'm assuming that you're opposed to, uh, or are you here to support her nomination because she doesn't have much of a record on abortion and she is Catholic, which, which you know, the, at least with the last two nominees was kind of a dog whistle to the right or to, I don't know if you want to call yourself the right, but to, to anti-abortion folks that uh, even though there's not a good abortion record, uh, at least we know where the Catholic Church stands on this. Well, it's interesting because... Uh I, I bet most people have not commented yet or, or even uh, realized that if she is confirmed, and she probably will be, she will actually make the sixth of the nine justices who are Roman Catholic, six out of nine. Right, although Catholics represent, what, 17% of the U.S. population, as I recall? Uh, it's about 24, 25. 24, okay. Uh, because, now, Justice... Uh, uh, the one Justice Kennedy, uh, of course, has voted with the Roe v. Wade majority, mm-hmm. and, and we don't consider him pro-life, although he did write the defense of the partial birth abortion ban. Right. He wrote the opinion, so he kind of swayed our way. So what we're most concerned about, of course, is that it seems that Sota Mayer uh, believes that courts can create social policy. And just as Obama has attempted to abuse the process of law in reshaping America to the far left, uh, it looks like she's prepared to abuse judicial authority. Although Obama just this morning announced that judges are there not to make policy, she actually said that justices can and should do this. So this well, is justices sort of historically ideology. have. I mean, this is I mean, her ideology. Yeah, if we look at, at uh, the New York Times back in 2005, now this was before Alito and, and Roberts were on the bench, so they're not included in this list, but if, if you judge activism, judicial activism, by overturning legislation passed by a democratically elected Congress, small d, democratically elected, mm-hmm. then you find that the least activist judges on the courts are Breyer, who's overturned, who's voted to overturn existing law 28 percent of the time, and Ginsburg, who's voted to overturn existing law only 39 percent of the time, both well under half the time, 
and the most activist judges on the court are uh, Clarence Thomas, who 65% of the time has voted to overturn, to, to go against the will of the people and the elected representatives. Kennedy, 64% of the time. Scalia, 56% of the time. All three of them, well over half the time. These are the most activist judges that we have on the federal court. Well, look, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I'm not privy to the, the data that you're, 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 you're mentioning. But what we do know is the most horrific uh, Supreme Court case of modern times is Roe versus Wade. I mean, this was the use of raw judicial power. Well, you and know, this, in, in in your opinion, I mean, I would argue that perhaps it was Buckley versus Viejo or First National Bank versus Boston. But, uh, you know, whether you're concerned about corporate power or whether you're concerned, uh, you know, about abortion, but but, you know, well, you know, Obama got it that that's your Greece. issue. He, he talked uh, just recently at Notre Dame University, uh, of course, about finding common ground. But I don't, I don't think this is a common ground. But even if she goes against her church, and even if she is. Uh, pro-choice, that's not going to change the balance of the court. Well, that's true, uh, and 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 this would then you know satisfy the uh, the extreme left that you're on uh, that has uh, clamored for such an appointment. So uh, now she doesn't have a strong record on abortion either way. I mean, we we these issues that she got involved in were not directly. Mm involving abortion, so we don't really know exactly the way she's going to vote. Do you but think, Chris... Have Chris, we ever seen a liberal on this court ever vote except Kennedy, who did sway a little bit to our side on the partial birth abortion, but have we ever seen a liberal that surprised the left with a pro-life uh, opinion. Well, have you ever seen a liberal on the court? I mean, I, I, I think you could argue huh? that Ruth Bader what? Ginsburg is sort of a liberal, but she's about the only one. Souter is a, just a strict constitutionalist, and he was appointed by Bush, by the elder. Oh, well, of course, he went for an uphold of Roe v. Wade, and we consider him a, a, a big disappointment, of course. Okay. For a Republican, uh, yeah, I would submit nomination. to you that there are that there's a whole wide variety of, of of issues here that go way beyond abortion. That that a you could define as politically liberal or conservative, and b uh, that uh, that are going to be that are going to be involved in this. Um, do you, and and to that question, uh, do you, do you want to get into any of these other issues, or is this uh, the 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 well, I mean, I'm I'm, in uh, I'm I'm primarily a pro-life activist, and I deal primarily with the social issues. Mm-hmm. But of course, I'm concerned about the the upcoming battle over uh, gay marriage, mm-hmm. which there's no big case that they have taken yet that will decide this. Well, but again, it's there's inevitable. There, yeah, it's but there's, come. There, there's nothing in her record. So, are you, uh, Chris Slattery, uh, EMCFrontline.org? Are you suggesting that uh, Barack Obama should have appointed a an activist right wing judge like Thomas Kennedy, Scalia, Rehnquist? Uh, or O'Connor, who all vote. O'Connor voted 46% of the time to overthrow, and Rehnquist uh, 46% to overturn existing law, rather than a non-activist judge like Souter at 42%, Stevens 39, Ginsburg 39, or Breyer 28%. Sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with those interpretations of these judges. Uh, well, I these mean, are just, you know, whether or not they voted to strike down law passed by we the people, and that's the definition of an activist judge. But, but I, you know, we would look, we would never uh, propose an avowed racist or an anti-Semite as acceptable on the Supreme Court. And why, why do we give a pass to those that appear to have a tolerance for the violence of abortion? I mean, this is what really uh, shocked. But me. you don't know whether she has that tolerance, and and and. Uh, no, we 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 you know. And, look, and, and you said you know you're not opposed to to her. racism, and yet you've got Rush Limbaugh out there going, "Oh yeah, it's going to be a token Hispanic," you know. I mean, it's, it seems pretty racist. Uh, well, no, I have no problem with her 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 gender and her race, uh, but it's uh, clear that she's in the mold of Obama, or else he never would have picked her. Wink, yeah. wink, nod, nod. We know she's going to be a liberal. Okay. And hey, Chris, and we're, we're out of time. We'll, we'll have to leave it at that. And, and, and I agree with you. And, and you think it's terrible? I think it's a fine thing. EMCFrontline.org is Chris's website. Thanks, Chris.